Today we are going to be doing the project I've been wanting to do the most for the Jeep. We are going to be building the platform system, so stay tuned guys. Welcome to Rhino Exploration. My name is Zach, and yes guys, today we are finally going to do it. We are going to be building the platform system for the back of the Jeep. I kept talking about it, telling you guys that we were going to be building it, doing it ourselves, and today is that day. I am very excited. Now, it's not just the platform system. As you guys know, Goose Gear makes their own platform system and whole back end style thing. That's what we are going to be doing for a lot less. <laughs> We're gonna build the platform system. We're also gonna be building a drawer system and a fridge slide system today. Everything for the Jeep to make life a lot more easier, more organized when we are out on the trail and camping and means less totes and just disorganization in the back of the Jeep. I'm, it's gonna be a really fun time. Now we are in a huge garage. This isn't my garage, this is my dad's garage. We are here, two reasons. All right, one, he's got this big huge garage. Two, he's got every saw known to mankind, which makes my life easier. <laughs> and also he's free labor. So we are going to be building this throughout the course of the next couple days and it should be a ton of fun. And no, we're never gonna be working on that. The day he gets his wiring harness maybe. But the Jeep is sitting out there. We are starting to get everything in the garage set up to start working, and it's going to be a fun day, guys. So I'm gonna take you guys along as we're building it. There may not be a whole lot of talking at times, and then we'll show you the progress as we're going along, but it should be a lot of fun, guys. And at the end of the video, I will talk to you guys about the general cost of everything in comparison to like the Goose Gear system, what I paid, and the whole process in general. So I hope you guys enjoy. And we're gonna get started here so soon. So this project was going to be big. We had just a couple of days to try and get this project done. And to start, we had to get out everything, just kind of get it all prepared, set up, and ready to go. Because he has a ton of different saws that we would be using from the table saw to a hand saw, a circular saw, and a skill saw. We, we pulled them all out. And so the whole tasking was to get it all out, set ready, we had extra folding tables in there to act as horses, saw horses, because he only had a couple of those. And so we were just getting everything prepped and ready to go because the whole idea was to just get it started and start getting it going. Now we have a philosophy of measure about a thousand times and cut once and hope that it works. <laughs> We try to do our measurements as exact as possible, but it doesn't always work out. And throughout the course of this project, there will be a few times where we just sit there and go, crap. But for the most part, we try to just measure a bunch of times so we can just cut once and be good. Now, my dad does have this remarkable habit of having ideas and thoughts run through his head, and he cannot express them. He can't use words, words. to save his life. And so the best thing I can do at times is just get out of the way and let him work through his process so we can figure out exactly what he is thinking. Now, a majority of our cutting would come from the table saw and we were using an eight inch round or an eight inch in diameter fine tooth table saw blade for this. And so it was making the cuts just perfectly fine. There was no rough edges or anything like that. And we would use it for a majority of our cuts because we could just make the cuts perfectly straight. We wouldn't have to worry about things moving too much and just our work with the table saw in the past, we've always done a really good job with it. Now towards the end of this project, we will have destroyed this saw blade. We used this one fine tooth saw blade for the whole thing and it 
at the end got destroyed pretty good. So through the process of this, we did do a lot of, you know, cutting, placing it in the back of the Jeep, making sure that, you know, the idea that we had was going to work. We were making sure measurements were correct, adjusting measurements, and just building it slowly by putting it in the back of the Jeep once things were cut, making sure things were going the way we wanted it, bring it back out, make cuts, adjustments, or, you know, prepare for the next board to be cut and placed. And right here you see we have the fridge and we are just making sure that the length of the board that the fridge is sitting on at the moment is going to work so that we'd have enough space for the drawers that we wanted to build and that the fridge will have enough space on either side to allow it to slide in and out without rubbing on anything. And we wanted to make sure that even with the slides in place, we would still have plenty of room. Because when we were placing this in the back of the Jeep, we would custom fit that bottom piece that the fridge is currently sitting on to fit with the back of the Jeep. As you guys kind of know, the goose gear system, if you're familiar with it, they kind of contour it to where it fits into certain areas of the Jeep along with the plastic that you know covers the ground in the Jeep and kind of just flows nicely. That was the goal in which we were trying to do and we almost accomplished that with this. There were a few spots that were a little rough. But we were trying to ensure that this would fit nicely in the areas of the Jeep, not interfere with other aspects of the Jeep, and that everything sitting in place would measure out correctly so that our drawers and the fridge slide and then even our platform system later on the next day would fit wonderfully in the Jeep and just give me the space that I needed without interfering or damaging anything else. Now we can get very creative at times, especially when we have to use just a circular, a circular saw to cut things. So we wanted to build basically a rail that the circular saw could run along and keep the line straight. So we got creative. We took his leveler, held it down with the clamps, and just allowed us to cut that wood perfectly straight, make that line as straight as possible. Then we could go over to the table saw and run it through there to get the other measurement that we needed. Now here we were using a completely different table saw blade than I have ever used before in my life. This is actually called a dado blade. This was an eight inch round or in diameter dado blade that we could hook into the table saw and what it does is it cuts a nice groove into the wood without cutting all the way through it so that you can use that piece of wood to you know, slot either another piece of wood as a divider in between it or slot it for cabinets things like that and it was actually really cool to see this work now i have never put one of these into the table saw and it has been a long time since my dad did so we had a little bit of slow going trial and error trying to get this in there but in the end we got in there and honestly it made a awesome cut into the wood so we could use it because what we were doing was making a divider between the fridge area of the drawer system and the drawers itself so we had to cut two pieces of the wood with the dado blade to get that to have that nice groove so that the wood would sit perfectly in there and create that groove yes. really well and make it more stable let's do this again shall we And this was where we gotten. So you see that middle piece there in between the fridge and the open side. That is where we used that dado blade to cut those grooves into the top and bottom piece so it would sit nicely and become more secure. My dad had this really cool ratchet stra strap system that you could, you know, combine it and holds a box in place or boards in place so you can create a box. And right now we are testing to make sure that we had everything measured out correctly. Now we had the fridge on the wrong side. My dad got himself a little backwards on where the fridge was supposed to go. 
<laughs> which was a little funny, honestly. But we got it all figured out, and then we started to put nails or screws, if you will. We used a lot of wood screws into this box. We wanted to make sure that the outside form was secured. And I'll be honest, we didn't go short with the nails. We were making sure that it was going to be held together and not come apart. We like to build things so that they don't come apart easily. And we do it so that that doesn't happen. And we hope that we never have to take it apart because then it becomes a pain. So here in a second, you're going to see us fitting it into the back of the Jeep. We're doing a test fit, but you will see that we did have some L brackets uh, up in the corners, and we will eventually put some in the lower corners where the fridge will go. But those were also there to just help give it support, because when we put the drawers in there and put the fridge in there with the slides, we wanted to ensure that this wasn't going to move side to side and come loose over time. We wanted to ensure that it had that support so that it was strong enough. Now, like I said, we were going to be using other saws. This is the skill saw, and what we are actually doing at the moment is we are building a trapdoor into the bottom area of the side where the drawers are going to be. And what this trap door is going to allow is where that plastic cubby hold is, it's going to give me access to that plastic cubby hold to use it as storage. My goal was to utilize as much of the Jeep's original storage as possible to allow me to have access to all of it, because some of this I never even got to use before I had this drawer system. All right, guys, we have progressed pretty far. It is raining, so we pulled the Jeep in. But this is what we got so far. It's pretty good, huh? It's been a bit of a pain in the butt, but we've been figuring out. We got the fridge on its slide. We still have to mount the little bracket that will help hold the fridge in place. We got the two drawers, and they are complete. We still are working on the door for the trap door. This is gonna lead to that cubby that's behind the Jeep or yeah, that cubby that's in the back of the Jeep, that's what's gonna lead to it. We gotta build the door face for this and put the cover on the back. And then this will be done, then paint everything else like that. And then we will work on, oops, let's get you in the light. Then we'll work on the second part, which is, you know, this is a two piece installation. The second part is the main platform that sits behind the seats. And we're gonna put cubby holes in there too. So that'll probably end up getting tackled tomorrow because it is like five o'clock right now. And we've been tackling this all day. It's been very hot, very humid, and the rain finally came, so it's kind of nice. But we are getting somewhere, guys. It's, it's looking pretty good, I will admit. It was a bit of a struggle at certain points. <laughs> the wood kind of decided to warp as we were cutting it, you know, as it sat there, so it made it a little interesting. So we got a little sanding. It's a little rough in certain spots, which we can easily clean up. But it is coming together, guys. So what we're going to do is basically finish this up so we can do paint for it. And I think that's where we're going to stop for the evening and then we'll hit everything else because this was the hardest part. The rest of it's going to be fairly simple. We hope. Cross our fingers. Well, good morning, everybody. This is day two of our project. And I'm hoping we finish it today. But right now we have finished up the drawer system we had to build the last little door for it and we are doing some sealing to it we're putting you know adhesive and stuff in there to help fill in the cracks and make sure it's strengthened then we have to let that dry paint it and that will be pretty much done we just you know adding little bits to certain things we have to add the holes to bolt it down to the Jeep which is not going to be very difficult and then we have started doing the layout for the second part of the platform system so that part that let's walk over here that will be covering right in here in the Jeep right behind the seats we're gonna be doing that build because with that one I am going to be making three different cubby holds within there so it'll be a little bit of work but it should be less work than building the drawer system which actually 
as it has sat overnight has gotten a lot better. It was kind of contorted a little bit and things had warped slightly. Not as much, it's all kind of settled now and it's working great. I actually am very happy with how it turned out. It looks really, really awesome. But right now my dad is in there finishing up kind of the adhesive part. We sanded it all down and everything. Once that dries, paint, adding all the little things. And while those are drying, we're gonna start working on that. So that is what is next, guys. All right, so how are we gonna bolt this down? We are going to reuse the bolts that were in the Jeep already. So if you'll remember, there's normally three bolts that run along here and over on this side. And here we have a couple of them in here. And they normally held down those, uh, the hooks that we could use, that you could clip things on and tighten things down within the Jeep. So what we are gonna do is reuse four of these bolts because these two right back here actually get covered by the shelving system like these all get covered but we actually have like other bolts and stuff that are already over top of those spots and honestly having it bolted down back there really won't make too much of a difference but we're going to bolt them down using these four right up here because this covers this whole cubby that's what that trap door is for is so i have access to this and can use this as another storage space but what we are going to do is we have a cardboard cutout of this whole thing that is the shape of the drawer system and we're going to set it down on here and get impressions onto it for these bolts so then we can draw them out and cut them out and then when we have the shelf all done and painted we can flip it over and cut out the holes that we need for these bolts so when we set this in here we can just put these bolts in and tighten it all down and then the shelving system will be secured to the jeep and then when it comes to securing the second part so the platform part that's going to go across here that covers right behind the seats we are actually going to be reusing these three bolts so there's one here and one exactly in the same place on the other side and this bolt and these used to hold down the seats for the back that you know kept them in place and everything we are actually going to use these three to help bolt down the second piece of the platform system so it'll be secure here and then we will have turn you this way all through here will be covered and we will have different um, supports throughout here so one will be covering here and on the passenger side we'll have a support across the back of the seats and one over the hump so the whole goal here let me move you over here so you all have a bird's eye view of what I'm hoping to do so the whole goal is to have a platform system covering here that it has a cutout for these areas, divides here, so it's two separate spots, and then we're going to then stick a divider between here, so it's two separate cubbies here and a cubby there, because the whole goal is, right there is going to be recovery gear and air up system, and it's quick, easy access, and it's permanently in the Jeep, so it's out of the way, it's clear, and then I can put stuff all up, all up on top of the platform system, and over here, we'll have tools, and whatever any other gear I want you know emergency gear we can put other first aid stuff in here and then you know having those cubbies is gonna be huge because it's gonna subtract having to have boxes and things on top and then up here I can just you know keep my tent in here and pretty much camera gear and keep it free if stuff because eventually we will put a power system in here that will be permanently in the Jeep and it'll probably sit right behind the driver's seat that I'll be able to run the fridge and any kind of batteries and electronics off of full time. Uh, but that'll be later down the road, but we are gonna get that all in preparation for that. So when I put the air pump in behind the passenger seat, we are actually going to basically kind of rewiring it so it's permanently connected to the battery, but we're gonna have a intermittent cutoff switch so that power will not always be running to the air compressor so when I flip the switch power runs to it I can turn it on fill up all the tires turn it off flip that switch and power stops so it's not going to accidentally drain the battery or anything like that and the fridge will still be kind of the same where we'll plug it in when we're driving plug it into the power station in the evening and eventually once we get the big power system in there we'll be able to plug it into that and just kind of leave it on that but that is all much later to come. But now we are going to finish the drawers. We're almost done with the adhesive. Let it sit and then we'll start working on it. Okay, this is everybody's favorite part of any project is when you get to kind of 
button down a part of it and this is what I'm doing. I am painting this. This was a very thick black house paint that my dad had for his home that basically protects against water, weather, everything and I thought it would be really good to use in this build because it would help protect it because we're going to be using this for all sorts of things. It's going to be in all different types of weather because when I go adventuring, it doesn't matter if it's raining, snowing, shining. I'm out there adventuring. So being able to coat this so that the wood doesn't get damaged in the long run was huge. And honestly, this paint went on so smoothly. It covered it so well. And it just, in the end, I was so pleased with how it looked because it being in just the straight up wood coloring that it is you know it's natural color I didn't really see it, it to me it just kind of looked like a project it, it just it wasn't coming together in my eyes and as soon as I painted all this I could see it I saw the finished product of what this was going to be and it was awesome it was like a night and day transformation from being a project that was built and wanted to be built to it was actually built and painted and this piece was then ready to go into the back of the jeep and be ready to use i it just it got me really excited for the outcome of this and we were only in the beginning of day two of doing this project mother nature can be very vindictive sometimes and just two hours into working she let the heavens open and it was just straight down pouring like we were in the garage you couldn't see out so we pulled everything in the garage and the garage has no electricity at the moment so we have you know an extension cord running to it and we're still trying to work but the rain was so loud on this tin roof because the garage is just all basically aluminum and tin it was insane and you couldn't see the house and the house is I don't know about 30 feet away you couldn't see it or my dad's truck which was 10 feet outside of the garage door that's how hard the rain just came down and it was like that for about two hours and then all of a sudden it just kind of stopped <laughs> it was the weirdest thing but it you know it kind of slowed down our progress a little bit now this is the second piece of the platform system this is the platform that is going behind the passenger and driver's seat this runs you know, between the seats and the kitchen setup that we had already built that I had painted black. And right now we are cutting out the holes for the cubbies. There were going to be three cubbies in the back of this Jeep. One for recovery gear and two for other things. And I wanted them for the sole fact that I didn't want to lose that area where the footwells were for the back seats. They, it was great storage once you've had this platform in because we made this platform go perfectly across it left us with some storage space so we were making these cubby holes for it and we had to use the flashlight because mother nature was still not necessarily playing nicely with us and so our daylight kept kind of being hidden behind the clouds so the flashlight was helping us to see the lines that we had drawn to cut out the sweat I'm going to be honest, the doors that we were making for this was probably the hardest part of the second piece of the platform system. Just trying to get the wood doors that we were cutting to fit into our openings, it just became a challenge. It was basically a game of millimeters. It was just fit, shave a little off here, fit, shave a little off here until they nicely fit in there. And it, it just it took its time because the wood just, this was... This became more challenging than the actual, you know, kitchen setup component of the whole thing because it was just millimeter here, millimeter here, a millimeter here. And it was like that for all three doors. It just, it became very time consuming. This actually took us about three hours to get these doors in because we just didn't want to rush the process and screw up and then have to, you know, cut a whole big new piece of wood to make these doors. And wanted to take our time doing it so that it was done correctly.
All right, guys. It has been a couple days since I left my dad's house and got back here to Denver, and it is quite warm. <laughs> it is around about, I don't know, about 93 degrees right now. But this is done. I am so, so excited that this has been finished and is complete, and I'm super happy. Okay, when I say complete, it is 99.9% .9 done. There's only like three things I need to do left to it, and it's just inserting, it's just inserting the little hooks for the fridge so I can tie down the fridge so it won't slide back and forth. But that's it. And all that requires is for me to go to Home Depot and get some longer bolts. But I haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> but it is a great day out here, and I wanted to talk you guys through this because this, as you guys have been watching has been a very long build and I promised you guys that at the end of this video that I would talk to you number wise you know cost labor all that stuff that it took for us to build this platform system and basically whole camp kitchen setup in the back of my Jeep and I will be honest with you guys it was a lot of hard work there was a lot of uh, lovely language being used at times <laughs> it got a little frustrating but in the end, it turned out really, really well. And I am super, super, super happy about this because I, I just can't explain it to you guys enough how happy I am. Now, is it the most pristine, perfect build in the world? No, this is a DIY budget build. Two things I love doing. I love doing DIY projects because it solves an issue that I am having or that other people are having and you can tailor it to solving the problem that you are having personally and I like doing things on a budget. There are lots of things out there and a lot of it costs a ton of money. And honestly, in the end, when you build it yourself, not one, most of the time, most of the time, it is cheaper. Sometimes it's not and it depends on what you do. And two, you get to customize it and tailor it specifically to you. It's not an all around one size fits all kind of thing. But. Let's go ahead and start talking about this because I know you guys really want to know. I'm going to apologize. There are lots of bugs flying out here. <laughs> we are back in our normal spot where I like doing reviews and talking to you guys and the bugs are thick out here, but it's okay. So if you're hearing buzzing around the microphone of the camera, that's what it is. All right, now let's talk about this. So this was completely tailored to what I wanted. Now. I will be honest, I took the Envision, if you will, my vision of all this was from the Goose Gear platform system and kitchen setup that they make. They are not a sponsor of the channel, obviously. And honestly, I loved that platform system. I, I love the way it looks in the back of the Jeeps and in other vehicles. And I have seen it in a lot of different rigs and I absolutely loved it. However, the price tag that came along with it for the platform system and then the whole kitchen set up in the back yeah it made me choke <laughs> it's a lot of money and I understand why after doing this project why it is so much but at the same time it was more money than I was willing to spend on something that you know in the end I would have had to do some modifications to just to fit my needs were this completely tailored to me so what do we have I'm hoping you guys will be able to see it. I know it's a little dark back here, especially because we painted this black. Don't worry, I will bring the camera in a little closer. But what do we got? We got, basically, we have two drawers here and a cubby. And this cubby on the bottom is the biggest. And the reason that it is bigger is because within this cubby, there is a trap door that leads to the storage spot that was in the back of the Jeep. You know, when you lifted up that little kind of like carpeted platform system you had that little cubby area I kept that cubby area I wanted to use it and be able to utilize it for space and so that's what we did we left it there and we built this all here and I have it all latched so none of these can open while I'm driving we do have the fridge slide which is locked in place and can be unlocked to come out like I said the one thing that I have not installed yet that I just had to get the longer bolts for is the hooks for the fridge to tie it down to I am reusing those hooks that were in the back of the Jeep, those little loops that you could hook on things. I am reusing the metal parts itself and just gotta get some longer bolts, stick it in there, get nuts, tighten it down, and then I can strap the fridge down and it won't slide back and forth. I'm not worried about it going side to side because this is a tight enough fit that it was designed specifically around the fridge. It's not going to really move at all. 
but we do have that and it is on a slide. All my slides are 24 inches long. Now, I know that on Amazon, which is not a sponsor of the channel and things like that, you can find longer um, slides for your drawers and for things like that. Honestly, I bought every single piece of this at Home Depot. And what they had, the longest they had was 24. It's rated at about 200 pounds each slide. I'm quite happy with it, honestly. I could have ordered them on Amazon, yes, but I really didn't want to. I was trying to do this, like I said, on a budget. And I will get to those numbers towards the end. But that is what it is. So let's go ahead and start opening up these so I can show you guys what it all kind of looks like. All right, guys, let's start with the fridge because almost most overlanders either have some kind of fridge, cooler, something that they have that they keep all their cold, cold food in. And so this is it. So for this is my locking system. It's just a hook and eye. And I get it, it's not a sophisticated locking system, but this is far enough apart that when I push this in, it snaps in and it doesn't come undone without me popping it. So I'm not concerned about it coming loose. Now, if we pull this out, it does come out the full 24 inches. And I am able to open up both of these just nicely. And once this is strapped in, it won't move as much. Like I said, it's not strapped in yet. but. This is sitting on its slide, which allows me to pull it out and open it up. Now I can flip this either way. I can flip it either way in the back of the Jeep. Right now I just have it this way because that's the way I loaded it in to bring it out here for you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. But it works great with my little kitchen setup that's going on right here. But this is on the slide. Now this piece of wood is about 26 inches long that we put this on and I did it so it has some extra length so the fridge is sitting on there and it's on the 24 inch slide so this actually slides out the full 24 inches the fridge is sitting on it i can open up both of them and then all i have to do is push it back in take my hook and eye and lock it yes there are locking slides once again home depot doesn't have them and i didn't buy them online maybe later on in the future i will but honestly i like this very much it's not a complicated thing and it's not hard to just you know flick the switch it's there and then push it back in, it's locked into place. Excellent. All right, let me loosen this. Doo -doo -doo. On to our drawers. Like I said, our drawers are locked. They do have locks on them, and they're really simple. I just, boop, it's unlocked, unlocked, unlocked. Beautiful. Now, this first drawer, now all my handles at the moment are just 550 cord tied on both ends and a little hole through there. I did it that way, one, because I didn't know what kind of handle I wanted on the drawers. And two, because I didn't know, I didn't know how much space they would take up. They don't block anything. And honestly, the pull cords at the moment work really well for me. So this is my first drawer. It is 24 inches long. And on the 24 inch slide, it comes out. And the width of this, I do believe is about 16 and a half or 16 and three quarter inches. Don't remember the exact measurement, but that's how long, wide it is. And it is awesome. So this top drawer for me at the moment is going to be more of my kind of miscellaneous drawer, junk drawer. I'm trying not to make it too much of a junk drawer, but it's gonna hold all the little miscellaneous things that you kind of use at camp or you take with you just in case and you never know if you're gonna use it or not. That's just kind of how I'm making this. And then the front part is actually going to hold my spices. And I have a little container that actually fits in the spot and it actually holds my spices because I made sure that this drawer was tall enough that spices could sit in here standing up and I could close it. But that's this drawer and it is the smallest of both the drawers and it is literally that way because miscellaneous spice holder. That's what I wanted because the whole purpose of this is my kitchen setup and a really good storage and I love it. The second drawer, I have to pull that down at the moment. When I painted it, it got a little sticking up here between the two drawers, so I have to pull this one down. Don't worry, I just have to sand it. In the second drawer is my kitchen supplies. It's got my utensils, my cleaning up stuff. Right now it's holding the paper towel. It will have all of my kitchen utensils and you know your basic supplies that you use that are extra at camp. And I am super happy about this. Now all my utensils right now are in this box just kind of stops them from moving around. I haven't gotten to the whole drawer organizing 
just yet, like getting organizers and things like that to help keep them in place. But I have, you know, my cleaning supplies, paper towel, all the things that I use at camp when I'm cooking are all right here in this drawer. And it's going to be so convenient to be working at the table here, cooking, and then just open the drawer, grab what I need to, and close it, and not having to dig through a tote, pull it out, dig in one of my bags, and pull it out. Because I'm not getting rid of the bags that I have hanging in the back of the Jeep. I've just reduced what's in them to make it more specific for other needs. Because, as you guys know, back of the Jeep, storage, storage, storage is such a big commodity. And having this, those bags, and all my little cubbies that I built, massive amounts of storage. I'm so happy. And I don't need a tote anymore. I don't need a single solitary tote box in the back of my Jeep when I go overlanding. And on my adventures, it makes me so happy. But that is this drawer. Now this big cubby. Now this big cubby, as you guys know, and I'm gonna zoom you in here, Oop. holds my stove. It also has my lantern in here at the moment, and it would hold, and my fire extinguisher. I just got that, I have to get a new strap for it because my old strap broke. So that's just kind of where it's hanging out. But it's holding my stove, and liner and stuff it'll hold you know if i have little propane bottles and i love this space yes i know it's quite big but you got to think i'm going to have other stuff that's put in here so it will fill up and what i love about this is i can store anything i want here if i don't want to put my stove in here let's say i get a smaller stove later on and i can store it below which i'll show you here in a second the cubby hold I can put, you know, bedding in here and other things like that or other kitchen utensils that I have or kitchen gear that I'm taking with me to camp to make, you know, my meals a little more exquisite than burgers and the typical stuff that I've been making at camp dinners. But it's awesome. But I'm going to remove all this and show you guys the cubby hold. Now I get it may be dark. I will try and make it as best I can. Right here is my cubby hold box. And this leads to that storage, like I was telling you, that's in the back of the Jeep. So if I just pull the string and pull up this top. There's my wood. And right in here is my cubby hole. And in here, I am storing all of my pots, pans. Right now I have my extra propane, and it all fits super well in here. Now, I don't have my plates in there yet, and things like that. Once that's all in there, this all will be in here and will not be moving around, and I love it. It's just another storage space to tuck it away up in here, and it's not blocking anything. It's not hogging up any space that wasn't used. This was never used when I was overlanding before and on my adventures, now it's being used. And it works perfect for my pots and pans. And all I have to do is pop it out, pull out what I need, put it all back, and it works perfectly. I love it. And then when it's all said and done, I just pack everything away, lock them all up, and there's the back of the Jeep. And it's awesome, and I love the fact. Guys, I just can't express it enough. You know, for someone that didn't have it, because I was going out on my adventures, I was testing out, seeing what I needed. I kind of been preaching that, you know, you need to see what you need first before you go and buy all these things for your adventures. I wanted to see what I needed. And honestly, guys, this is fitting everything I need. And then right up in here, which I know you guys can't see, right up in here, you guys know, this is that little cubby where, this is that little cubby where the jack used to sit. It's, the jack's been moved because it's a piece of recovery gear and I need it more accessible. And right now I'm using this as a storage area for my straps, my ratchet straps, bungee cords, anything that's kind of a strap. I'm storing it here and this easily, I can just pull it right up. Yo, I need to put it back. It's another piece of storage that wasn't being utilized before and is now being utilized. All right guys, now we're in to the back of the Jeep. We're right behind the seats. And as you guys know, ever since Easter Jeep Safari, the back seats have not been in the back of the Jeep. They've gone. Like I said, they're not returning anytime soon. And this piece was specifically built for back here. Now, I will be honest, like I said, DIY, it's not the most perfect thing in the world. We did have to cut a little bit here uh, due to our measurement was off a little bit because we stuck a whole board in the back of the drawers here to help cover them all and not have to like just make individual slots. Our original measurement was off a little bit, so we had to cut it. It's okay because it's not blocking anything and what's gonna sit right here is the jerry can. But back here is a completely flat surface, just like the Goose Gear system, this is completely flat and I can sit anything I want back here and it just lays nicely. I don't have to worry about the divots and the bumps from 
where your feet would go when you have the back seats. And I have three cubbies back here. I have this one, this one that's just open. Here's the door for it. Just stick it in just like so. And I have one right in front of you guys, which I will show you here in a second. Now, they are each three cubbies, three different sizes, uh, and I absolutely love them. And they're specifically designed for what I needed. So, the one in front of you, which you cannot see at the moment, which you will, is the largest of the cubbies, and that holds all my recovery gear. I repeat, all of my recovery gear is right there. My air up system is also in there. And eventually that will become, the air system will be permanently installed into the back of the Jeep. I just have to get the power cables that I can run up to the battery, longer length ones, and that I can permanently do it and install a switch. That's gonna be a whole different project that I will bring you guys along. I'm excited about that, but that's later to come. But it holds all of my recovery gear and it works beautifully. It all sits nicely in there. This whole cubby takes up that whole footwell. And I love it because everything, as you know, sat in a box or in that bag that was right there. And now I don't have either of those. It's all in one spot, it's all accessible. And if I was in a situation, I can easily get to it still. It's not hard because these doors are so easy to pull up, guys. I just pull my handle, and there it is. And on these doors, you think, oh, they're just sitting in there. I do have a little push down latch, so when you push it in there, it's not like a magnet. You know, those magnets that you stick in there, this is just, you push it in between the two and it holds it in place. So in case, you know, over time, these kind of, you know, you start using it, things get a little more worn. It won't just pop out. And I'm super excited about that. Now, in these two, I don't have anything in them yet. One of them, this one, is going to be holding all my sleeping gear when I go on my adventures. All my sleeping gear, both my sleeping bags, blankets and my pillow will fit in this side. It's specifically built for that and it fits perfectly. And in this side, I will have some of my charging stuff and things like that. It's going to kind of be my camera box and miscellaneous things that I use for filming with bringing you guys along just so it's tucked in here out of the way. It's not just bouncing around and I can easily get to this as I need to. Now, my tent will sit across in here because as you guys know, I still have my ground tent and also my water and my jerry can because I still don't have a mount for the outside. It's not gonna happen yet. It's going to mount in here. Now I'm reusing parts, like I said, from the Jeep. Those hooks that you could hook things or the loops that you could hook, the, hook things into in the back of the Jeep, I'm going to be reusing those. The bolt here for the seatbelt, that is actually going to get a hook in it and I'm also going to install a hook here so I can just stick it there and ratchet my jerry can down. This one will have a piece for the fridge back here. And eventually, I will have a bigger power station sitting right behind the shelves here, behind the drawers, that will be powering everything. It will power the fridge, it'll, it'll be my permanent power station within the Jeep. I'm not gonna go the whole red arc build it all. I just don't want to mess with all the wiring and figuring it all out. I just want to make it simple. And I'm going to put about a 2000 plus watt hour power station in the back of the Jeep that's going to be its permanent residence. But that is like later on down the road this year that that will happen. But this is the platform system guys and I love it. I love it. Now you're probably wondering how do I have it all secured? Once again, I'm reusing the Jeep right here and there's one over by you guys that were bolts for the seats i am reusing it we drilled it out we stuck it over top because these were permanent bolts that were sticking up and then we took the nuts and just tightened it down this doesn't move and the whole cabinet system is sitting on is bolted down by four bolts that were holding those loops that you could hook things onto we drilled them out cut a the area is nicely and it sits right on top of it and we bolted it down. So this isn't moving. That is my counterweight also for the fridge. That's why the whole thing doesn't come falling out when you put the fridge out there because, because it's not gonna be off balance because this is bolted down. So everything is secured so it doesn't come flying up if I'm going on an adventure and don't, you know, everything's moving. But yeah, guys, this is the system and I'm absolutely happy with how it turned out. Now my bags, are being utilized, like I said, for other things. I still have some of my air down gear in the bag closest to you. And in this bag, I have more of the 
toiletry aspects, kind of miscellaneous power cables, things like that in this bag for right now. Um, until I take this out on a maiden voyage with this in here, I don't exactly know what I'm going to put in all these bags. Just because there will be little things. Um, but I just I have so much extra storage now, guys. It's ridiculous, and I absolutely love it. And the fact I don't need a tote anymore makes me so happy. That was just an issue I was dealing with, and I just didn't enjoy it. As I promised, right in here, all my recovery gear sits in there. The air up system sits right there because eventually that is where it'll be permanently mounted. And then everything else is here. I got. My straps are right back here. This is just the air up hoses. Underneath the air up hoses are more straps. I have the jack, jumper cables, and some tools tucked up back there that I use specifically for recovery. My other tools that I have for the Jeep are gonna be in that small cubby, but I don't have them in here yet because I'm figuring out the bagging situation for them. All right, the time of the video, I'm gonna take a seat that everybody is waiting for. The thing that I promised you guys I would talk about so let's talk numbers. What did this cost? This whole setup from start to finish, what did it cost versus what you can buy on the market? What's out there? And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm just gonna use Goose Gear as a reference for a lot of this because they are one of the leaders out there for platform systems for the back of the Jeep. Yes, I know there are others, but they are the biggest one out there at the moment. So I'm going to use them as the reference for everything that I was doing. <clears throat> because that's what I was referencing. I had a thousand flies on me. So, this whole project cost me $340. Yes, I'm gonna say it again, $340. And that was all the gear. That was everything from the hardware, the screws, to all the wood, all the materials, everything in total, $340. That's what it cost. To give you a comparison, Goose Gear, for just the whole seat delete platform system, from front to back platform system, is around $1,500, maybe just a hair over. And then if you include the whole fridge setup and drawer system, that's barking around three, just over three grand. So their whole setup, if you will, is roughly around $5,000. I did the same thing to my DIY standard for $340. That's a huge difference, guys. I wasn't even near $500. Now, I also had the tools to do the job. Better yet, I should say my dad had the tools to do the job. That's why I went to his house. He's had us every saw known to mankind, blades, bits, you name it. That's why we were able to do all this. And the labor behind this wasn't little. Now, I'm going to be honest. We did this between two days and a morning. It took us 24 hours, 24 hours total work, to build this whole system. And it was a lot of work. Don't get me wrong. It was a lot of hours, a lot of measuring. It, it just was a lot of labor and time. Now, for someone like me, I love doing DIY projects. It was 100% worth it to me to be able to just sit there and do this. And the 24 hours was 24 hours well spent working on this, and I loved my end result. It is awesome to see what it became. So, in comparison, if I was to add up all that time and stuff, you, yeah, I'm probably sitting somewhere near $2,000 worth of work, if you will. So for all this but because I did it it was free and honestly my dad's labor is free <laughs> free man free labor so doing all that it only cost me $340 and it was you know honestly I'm so happy and I got to tailor this specifically to me and design it the way I wanted it to be designed so I'm super happy with how it turned out now like I told you from the beginning this was a budget build. Obviously, if it was $340 versus about five grand for the Goose Gear system, it was a budget build. And yes, some of the materials in here, they weren't the highest end piece of wood that I could buy. I, I was a little concerned about weight, and this all together, this whole thing, weighs about 70 pounds. 
all together. Like, and the majority of this weight is the drawer and fridge system right here. That is where most of the weight is and it sits in the back of the Jeep. And yes, I get it, it's about 70 pounds of weight. Yeah, if I used other materials, especially aluminum and things like that, yeah, it could be lighter, but I wanted to do this as budget friendly as possible. And yes, it isn't perfect. It's perfect in my eyes, in the sense of I built it, it fits my needs. Yes, there are, there are a little, there are a few flaws here and there. Of course, it's a DIY project. If I wanted to make it absolutely perfect, it would have cost me damn near as much as the goose gear system. And at that point, why should I put all that work in if I can just buy that? And that wasn't the whole point behind this. I wanted to fit my solution. Now, do you need a DIY? Do you need to do a DIY project? Do you need to buy a platform system from? or something of that nature, that's up to you. Like I said, I've been experimenting and seeing what is it that I need and what is it that I want. And I compared the two and I've gone on my adventures and over the course of this year, on my adventures so far, I have, as you all have seen, been using straps to tie stuff down. It doesn't move. I've been using totes left and right. And as the trips have gone on, my number of totes have shrunk but I'm still at that point where when I was getting to camp, I had to pull everything out of the Jeep. Everything came out for the most part, but the fridge. And I was climbing in the back of the Jeep, hunched over trying to get in the fridge to see I couldn't open the doors all the way because of the roll bar. And then at the you know end of the day, the next morning, you gotta pack it all back in and try and get it all to fit perfectly again. And it just was a pain in the butt. Now, for some people, totes work great. They love doing it. Hey, all the power to you. I am not that person. I wanted a more streamlined solution that fixed my problem, and I designed it, and I made it, and here it is. And like I said, guys, and I'm going to keep saying it just because it makes me happy, zero totes. I don't need a single tote box in my Jeep unless, for whatever freaking reason, I decide I need a something extra. Otherwise, I don't need a single box in the back of my Jeep anymore, and it makes me so pleased because I just got so sick of having a box that I had to take out, put back in, take out, put back in, figure out how to strap it down. It was annoying. And now, getting ready for trips, getting to camp, packing up from camp, going on my adventures is made so much easier because I have this system now. Now, like I said, that's not me saying go out and make a system, go go buy a system. Hey, if that's what you need and that's what you find you need, go for it. I give you all the power to it. A list of everything I used is going to appear here on the screen and it's just gonna kind of scroll down for you guys. And that is what I used. Literally, hinges, locks, all that, the wood, it's all there. And guys, I absolutely had a fun time. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I know that it wasn't the most talkative video and there's gonna be a lot of me talking over what I'm doing and kind of explaining it as we went as we went along because as we were doing it guys honestly we were just two days is what we had to do this and we just were kind of just cranking it out as we went. And I hope you guys, you know, get a good idea. If you guys want to do your own DIY projects, I hope this helps. And I hope that the list of materials and just seeing how this turned out works and if yours turns out even better that's awesome guys i absolutely love doing my own projects and bringing you guys along i hope like i said you guys found this super helpful so thank you all for joining me on this you know build for the jeep it was a lot of fun and i hope you guys had a good time and i will see you all next time out on the trail